Hey, it's Harkert from Play. Today, let's talk about Play's interface in any version of Play after 2.0. So with the bottom center of your screen, you'll see your three modes. And you can still switch between these using your keyboard shortcuts, one for page overview, two for design mode where you'll design your project, and three for interaction mode where you'll prototype your project. Now let's go back to design mode. When you wanna add objects to your page, you're gonna use this add sign in the top left corner. When you click on this, it's gonna open this list of all of the elements that are available for you to use in play. And you can search through all of these using the search bar up here at the top, or you can scroll through the list. And then you can add anything to your page by clicking on it and then clicking where you'd like to add it, either onto your page or onto your canvas. And you can see when it's added to the page, it's also added to the layers panel here. In addition to the add panel there, you can also open the library. And this is where you'll find all of the components that you've created in your project, all of the assets you've created or uploaded. So this is gonna be your images, your videos, your RAI files, all of that. And then you'll also have your fonts. So if you've uploaded a custom font to use, it's gonna show up here. For each of these tabs in the library, you can search through all of the fonts, assets, or components you have, and you can sort them alphabetically or by the date they were created. And to close this, you'll just click on it again. Now, another way to add objects to your page is to open the quick add menu. So you'll select a container on your page, so a stack, or in this case, a page, and then you'll see this green plus side on the side. So you can either click that or use the keyboard shortcut A. And when you do that, it's gonna open the quick add menu. And here you can scroll through all the options or use your arrow keys to go down and up on this list. You can also search through everything here. So maybe I wanna add a video. And then you can either click or press enter to add it into the container that you have selected. So in this case, I had the page selected. It's going to add it onto the page. But let's say I have a video selected, which as you'll note is not a container you'll see that the green plus sign has disappeared because you technically can't add anything to a video. But we can still press the A key to open this quick add menu. And I can delete what I had in the search bar and I can search through anything and add something else. So maybe I want another text element underneath here. You can see when I added that, it's gonna be added as a sibling of the object that's not a container that I had selected. Back over on the left side of your screen, on the bottom, you're gonna see all of these icons here. And all of these represent the different panels that you can have open. So the top one is the layers panel, which is currently open. This is where all of the layers in your project will live. Next, you'll have your styles where you can control your color gradient type, spacing, and corner radius styles to use throughout your project. Next, you have your variables panel. And you can see right now it's doled out. But when I click on that, you can see that the icon gets darker and there's a slight white background around it to show that this panel is enabled. So you can see I have the variables. And this is where I can create my global variables, my page variables, if I have component, my component variables, and if I have a prefab, my prefab variables. Next, we have the events panel. This is where I'll add my events. And then we have the Swift panel, and this is where you'll have your Swift UI code export. So you can choose which combination you'd like to keep open in design mode. So maybe I don't really need my Swift UI or my events or variables. I just want my styles and my layers open. Now let's go over into interaction mode. So when I'm in interaction mode, you can see that I have these panels still visible on the left side, but you'll see that they're different. Here I have my events and I have my variables panels open, but not my styles or my layers. That's because I'm able to choose which panels I want open in design mode and interaction mode. So I have the panels that are relevant to me open depending on the mode. So I can go back to design mode and you'll see here, I still have that layers and styles panels open. One last thing I'll mention while we're on these panels in the top, in the bottom left corner is this last one here that says helper. And when you click on this, you get a little UI menu that will give you some documentation like the support site or a getting started page, a list of all of our keyboard shortcuts, and also the options to share feedback with us and report a bug, which we really encourage you doing if you find any issues in play because it allows us to fix those much easier. Back to interaction mode. So in interaction mode, if you look at the right side of the screen, you're gonna see this interaction panel. And this is gonna be a list of all of the different interaction modes you can use to create interactions and thus prototype your designs in play. So in this first tab, you'll have a list of all of them that are available. And similar to everything else in play, you're able to search through to find the one you'd like. We also separate these out into different tabs. So you can get a little bit more specific for what you're looking for. 
So you have a list of all the prefabricated interactions that we've created for you. So you can just drag and drop them into your designs and use them and control them with the prefab controls. If you wanna learn more about prefabs, we can link you to another video in the description. Next, we have our triggers. These are all the things that you'll add to trigger something, trigger a group of actions in your design. And then you also have your actions here. And at the bottom of the panel for all of your actions, the bottom of this list, you'll also have your other interaction blocks like conditions, animate, delay, loops, and timers, along with your debugging option to print. Again, if you wanna learn more about all of these, go to our support site and we'll have videos and articles describing all of these things. So you can either drag and drop these onto your page or you can double click and they'll also be added onto your page. Now you'll see in interaction mode that you have this purple plus sign that looks very similar to how we opened the quick add menu in design mode. And as you might've guessed, this also works in interaction mode. So let's say I have my full page selected. I can press A and I'll see that quick add menu. And then I can search through all the things that are available for me to add on the selected object. So in this case, I have a page selected, so I'll get a list of all of the triggers that are available for page. And I can, again, similar to design mode, just press enter to add it to my page. Now with the trigger selected, I can press A again, and this time the selections in my quick add menu are a bit different. And that's because instead of having an object selected where I have to add a trigger, I now have a trigger selected where I can't add a trigger. I can only add an action or another interaction node like condition or loop. So I can go through, search through here. We have some of the top recommended ones available, but you can search anything that's not visible here. Again, I can add that right there. Other than these changes to the interface, Play will work very similarly to how it did before Interactions 2.0. You'll still have your tabs at the top. You'll still have your share panel, your Zoom, and your teammates list up here. And you'll still be able to open the lobby at any point. But now, it's just a home, the word home instead of a little home icon. And that is Play's interface in version 2.0. Thanks so much for watching this video.